What's up everybody, D-Man back, looking to a brand new video, and today we're going to be doing another Monarch News Roundup. In this video, we were going to be covering a bunch of events from June 2022. That's right, the month that the Monarch show began filming. I'm getting over a really bad sickness, so I don't know how my voice sounds, but it feels like it <coughs> feels different. <laughs> also, I don't know what it is about this new uh, this new environment I'm in that causes the mic to be so much more prominent in all the videos when it didn't used to be in any of the frames, but I guess I'm just living with it these days. I got a comment from somebody on my last news and update from somebody who I believe is named Benny and McKay DeMarco, and he was super excited that I brought the old format back. He really liked that I started with the art and then I moved into the news and updates, so that's what I'm gonna start doing again. And good for me, uh, I saved all of my links from all the way back in the past when I kind of stopped doing art. I never really stopped, but I kind of stopped featuring it as prominently. Which means I have art dating all the way back to King of the Monsters that you guys were sending me. If you guys send me art currently, I'm not going to get to it because I'm so far behind. So I got to catch up on the old art first. <laughs> but today we're going to start out with a picture from Godzilla Core. And this was one that he sent me on Twitter of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. And it's just a really cool little thing that he drew. I wonder if he even remembers drawing this from all the way back in the day. But it looks great. I, I really like the detailing here. I think the green eyes on Ghidorah is super interesting. And I like that he has little details like the gills and the scratches on Godzilla's body and I think it's interesting the way that he has the light blue highlights through Godzilla's spines. It looks great. Good job man. Next up from a friend of the channel this is an incredible piece by Julius Bridgeforth. It's so great. I love the texturing. I love the detailing. Julius has this really incredible texture to all of his pieces that I haven't really seen any other artists online have. I don't know if this is hand drawn but it looks very hand drawn to me and I love that quality of it. I also love that he shows Godzilla muzzling Godzilla Dora. Something that I think kaiju need to do more of. I think it's always super funny when kaiju muzzle other kaiju. I wished Kong would just clamp his hand around Godzilla's face to stop him from doing the atomic breath. I think it's so fun whenever a monster does that. And I love that it's featured in this incredible Battle of Boston picture with the lightning going on in the background and Ghidorah shooting his gravity beam into the sky and Godzilla looking incredible. The whole thing is great. Great piece. And a cool thing about both of those art pieces is that they were both drawn before Godzilla King of the Monsters even released in theaters. That's how far back my art folder dates. All right, let's do it, guys. Let's get into it. This is a super exciting one. I'm very, very ready for this. It was reshared by Toho Kingdom around this time, July 2022, the Godzilla 2014 premiere in Japan, and I just wanted to highlight this little video. You can go check out the full thing down below, but it's a great little featurette showing off the Japanese premiere of Godzilla 2014, and it looks like a lot of fun. It looks like everybody had a great time, and I like the interviews that they do with some of these people, and I love that it ends with an interview from Akira Takarada. That's really nice, and it's really great to see him there having a good time. I hope he enjoyed the movie despite the fact that they cut his part from it and I hope that was a very good memory for him. Next up, the Monarch shooting schedule changed again. This time the schedule was changed from June 27th, 2022 to December 9th, 2022. Maybe this is the one they stick to. I don't know. They changed it all the time. I think the first few shooting days were done interior, which is why there's no footage of it. Jess Hall, the director of photography or otherwise known as cinematographer for WandaVision and Hot Fuzz was now announced to be DPing some episodes of the Monarch series. If I had to guess just because Matt Shackman is coming back. Matt Shackman directed the WandaVision show. I think Matt Shackman brought Jess Hall with him, and so the two of them probably worked together on the first two episodes together, and I don't know if Jess Hall was involved with any other episodes. I hope that the Monarch show overall has a very consistent feel in terms of visuals, and I hope it also has a very consistent feel in terms of visuals with the Godzilla 2014 movie. I think that's very important in keeping the DNA of that time period alive. Anna Sawi, the actress playing Kate, did a little bit of an interview where she discussed being on the Monarch series, where she has a little quote. She says, if you know me, you know I'm a big animal person, so imagine how stoked I am to be meeting Godzilla, which I think is just really cute. Good for her, and I hope she had a great time on this show. I'm super excited to see her in it. I hope if they do multiple seasons that she can return time and time again. She looks great. We'll talk about her in the next episode, but we do have some footage of her from set. We have updated Monarch character bios from our friend KDM. KDM is going to be giving us all of the information in this video for the most part, so huge shout out to KDM. Please go check him out, link down below.
level up. These character bios are very interesting. So there's an updated character bio for Kate, played by Anna Sawi. This states she is a former school teacher and G-Day survivor who travels to Japan to settle family affairs and is tired of running from her problems. That's all stuff we pretty much knew before, but it sounds like she is no longer a school teacher at the start of this story and will be a tragic survivor of the death and destruction of San Francisco firsthand. Following the battle, the government, Monarch not being too far behind, attempts to set up speedy emergency shelters and refugee camps. We have some footage of that that we'll talk about later this video. Kate travels to Japan to sort out some family affairs where she learns about herself and family while trying to figure out how to move forward with so much trauma. During this, she uncovers secrets linking her family to Monarch. So I guess my theory from the other video goes out the window where I thought, what if she saw her father, Hiroshi, in the aftermath of 2014? How crazy would that be? I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> Next up, we have a character bio for Duvall, which is somebody we haven't really heard about before. This is played by Eliza Laskowiski, and she is an expert operative with unwavering confidence and a wry sense of humor. She works for Monarch and is a leader for Tim. Tim is the next character that we, we heard about these characters in the last video. We heard about who was playing them, but we had no idea who they were. So Tim is the next character. Tim is played by Joe Tippett. And just like I guessed in the last video, he is working for Monarch. Tim is an office secretary who dreams of becoming a secret agent. Sounds like he's finally going to get his chance. Yeah, Tim. I don't know anything about Tim. <laughs> I don't know if he's a likable character, but he dreams of becoming a secret agent and his overconfidence gets him into trouble, but he is determined not to fail his organization, Monarch. Good for him, man. Somebody's got to be sticking up for Monarch because they get no respect in the MonsterVerse. The show will continue the story started in Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island, so I don't know what they're totally planning on bringing in from Kong Skull Island. I would assume what this means is we're going to be developing Monarch in terms of this small secret organization that's kind of struggling with their budgets and struggling to get by and we're going to be seeing them expand into the mega organization we see them as in Godzilla King of the Monsters. I would also assume from this that we're going to be getting some references to Kong and Skull Island, although I don't think we're going to be seeing it. I think they're going to be like, well, that's about our only concrete evidence of Titans existing for sure, for sure, before the events of 1999 and the Philippines and all the stuff in Godzilla 2014. So I think there's going to be some passing references to the events of Kong Skull Island, which is sick. I don't really know what else they're going to include in the show, but many people have speculated there'll be a Kong cameo. I think if they do have a Kong cameo that'll be in later seasons I don't think that's going to be a season one type of deal but I would love to see some developing threads from Kong Skull Island I hope if future seasons of this show come out Houston and Aaron Brooks can eventually become a part of it I don't think they're going to be a part of this show I also think there's the potential to have some Kong Skull Island set up because of course we are flashing back to the 60s I think there is the potential to set up some maybe rumors about this mysterious island and that maybe Monarch should be looking into where this island is and they're discovering some of the secrets of Skull Island I don't know I think that could be interesting. KDM posted a teaser about plot information relating to this show, so let's run through the plot info teasers we got. This series begins right after the 2014 movie and shows the immediate follow and aftermath of San Francisco. Um, Oakland is involved as well. It's I, th I think KDM says San Francisco slash Oakland because we have seen, as we'll talk about later, Oakland resources are being used to help the people of San Francisco. For those of you who don't know, San Francisco is geologically located right across a bay from Oakland. Oakland is right across a bridge from San Francisco. Francisco. And in the MonsterVerse, Oakland is actually where Ford Brody goes after he's picked up from the train incident. He goes to Oakland where the military has set up a temporary headquarters and launches the Halo Jump from there. Camps are now set up for the thousands of new homeless people that inhabit San Francisco now. And the government is in charge, but Monarch is right behind. Monarch is around watching over this whole operation, trying to have a helping hand in the shadows. I would be surprised to see how the government responds to this situation, especially given what we know from Godzilla King of the Monsters where San Francisco is all but abandoned and turned into just an overgrowth where the radiation from the Titans makes it uninhabitable for a little while. I'd be surprised if this show starts to touch on that, but it's such a weirdly massive detail to just slip into Godzilla King of the Monsters that I feel like they've got to develop it at least a little bit here. And it is time, guys! It's time! Our first official set photos from the Monarch show are out, and it's so cool. I love it when we get to see set photos. I always think it's a good time. Our very very first set photos are of a relief camp. This was shot in Vancouver as a San Francisco refugee camp. It featured 180 extras and showed the aftermath of 2014. There were two main characters on set and dialogue scenes would be shot there. Shooting was to happen between 7 and 10 p.m. so it's a daytime shoot and these scenes would be directed by Matt Shackman meaning they take place in the first two episodes. I believe this is the first episode we're seeing here. The photos show a relief camp in the middle of an urban area showing that they have
have used the city itself to set up relief camps, so they're not setting up outside because the damage was so widespread. So unlike a situation in Godzilla vs. Kong where the damage at Pensacola, Florida's Apex factory was so small that they could be moved to an off-site location, here they actually have to set up camps in the city itself. In the next video, we'll talk about how some green screen was used, and I believe it's going to be used to put helicopters in the sky, smoke, and rubble in the background. But I think it's a really interesting idea here we're seeing, and it's developing on Godzilla 2014 where, of course, they have to use a football stadium as the base point where people have to go to after the attack. I don't have a ton to say about these set photos. We can see some government relief tents set up. They look very military, very tan, and it is pretty contained. So it doesn't look like it's gonna be enormous. Looks like they're gonna have multiple pop-ups throughout the city. This does this is not the only one. I think this is gonna be the only one we visit, but I think it's gonna be implied there are tons of these that the government has set up. We also have a set of BTS photos showing the crew prepping this location. So we can see some crew hands on set, and then we can see some big machinery they're putting in place. This big truck that's housing this big metal frame, I believe they're gonna hook up a dampener on it uh, something to dampen lighting so that they can get even shadows i believe they're going to hook one of those up on that truck our next set of bts photos show again crew prepping the area and also vehicles being moved in so here's where we see oakland ambulance and fire supplies being lended to san francisco which is great we have more angles of the set with that big metal frame they're setting up we have some military trucks moving in and then just some basic photos of the actual camp itself with the triage center and where they're going to be admitting people who are injured just more photos of the vehicles and wider shots of the whole set itself. It was pointed out by KDM that the relief tents actually matched the relief tents in the background of the Godzilla 2014 movie. These were set up inside of the football stadium that Ford Brody is taken to as a relief center at the end of that movie. And so they are keeping a sort of visual continuity and consistency to the 2014 film in this, which is great. It's great to see. We love that. We have some overhead photos taken by somebody who doesn't know how to white balance. <laughs> and the overhead photos show them moving the vehicles onto set, the crew prepping the set for the next day's shoot, them setting up cones and stuff, and, and really blocking this area off so that they can film here. We do have one overall photo of the whole set. This is actually underneath a bridge, and it looks like it's in a little park where they were filming. So there's apartments nearby, and somebody in one of those apartments was able to take a photo of the entire set, and we can see it is actually a lot larger than it looks. It, it looks to be like the full park has been taken over, and it makes sense because they have to fit 180 extras in there. Finally, we have one additional set photo of the crew ramping up production, and you can see this is on the morning that they shot. So we'll end it here for now. We don't want to get into all the stuff of when they're actually filming until the next video, but you can see they've brought all their crew gear, and the crew has shown up before the cast, so they have all their equipment ready to go, and they're getting ready to film for the day. And like I said, that is where we're going to end it. That's a pretty good place to end it, I think, because the next set of set photos we have, production has begun officially. They're filming cameras rolling. Right now, they're just getting ready, and I think that's a good place to end it. What do you guys think about all this stuff? Let me know down below. Are you guys excited to see the direct follow-up of 2014? It was something that I begged for back in 2014 and 15. I said, we need to see how the public responds to Godzilla. We need to see the aftermath. We need to see all this stuff. And then we never really did. The MonsterVerse just kind of skipped right past it with their five-year time skips that they love to do. I'm so happy that we are going back and we're going to get to see all of this stuff as it should be slowly developed and revealed the way that they did it in the Heisei era, the way that they did it in the 1954 film the way that Shin Godzilla excelled so well. And I'm excited for that, man. All right, that'll do it for this one, guys. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon for really keeping the channel running. It truly, their support goes a super long way towards making sure I can keep making videos like this for you. If you want to support the Patreon, you can using the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. And I'll see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out.